Like I said, it's a privilege to share with you the word this morning. And um, if I have to title this message this morning, it is God's final word. God's final word. Now, before I just jump in and get into the message this morning, a bit later on, we're going to have communion. We're going to partake of the communion. And if you declare that Jesus is Lord of your life, you're more than welcome to join us in that. And then after the service this morning, in this cold, wet weather, we're going to baptize some people. How cool is that? Hey, that is amazing. Yes, come on. That is amazing. Luckily, this morning, as we baptize them, it's going to be in hot water. <laughs> Woohoo! Right. So, it's going to be amazing. So, buckle up. It's going to be an amazing morning together. I want to talk to you about God's final word. I'm so excited that Piet last week closed his sermon and, um, and, and, and his sermon together in Mark chapter 9 with these words. And in Mark chapter 9, verse 7, he read this, he said, Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from heaven, um, came from the cloud, which says, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Do you remember that? For those of you who are here, listen to him. Now, it may seem strange to you. I don't know where you are in your walk with Jesus and in your are listening to Jesus, that some, may, some much weight would be put on this simple command. You know, it might be strange that, that God would put so much emphasis on this, give heed to Jesus. Listen to Jesus. Pay close attention to what you have heard in his final word, decisive word that God spoke in Jesus. It might be strange to you, but I'm to be honest with you, it's not surprising to me because I know how I struggle sometimes to listen. <laughs> um, yesterday, we, I made a joke and, um, and I read something to my wife. It says this, it says, I don't know why somebody would, converse, would start a conversation with something like, you haven't had a, heard a word I said. <laughs> you know, <laughs> why would somebody start a conversation like that? Yeah. <laughs> And only the reason is because they've been communicating and talking and saying stuff and I haven't been paying attention. Especially if I'm on my phone. I, I literally hear nothing going on around me. And so my wife needed to come up in front of me and she had to look me in the eye and say, I'm talking to you. Ah, get it, right? So I struggled to listen. Let me ask you this this morning, just very quickly. What... Are you listening to? Let me give you an example. If I want to listen to something, now all the kids, you, you will know this, right? If I want to listen to music, what do I do? I down, either download it or I, or I go to this, you know, and I, and, I, and, I, and I tune in to this specific song or band or whatever that I would like to listen to, and I listen to that music, right? So I, I'm intentional about it. I make every effort to listen to it. If I want to listen to the news, uh, on, on some mornings I drive my daughter to school and in and, and that specific time they might have the news on, on the radio. And then I would, you know, shush, shush. And then I watch my daughter look at me and says, don't shush me. I want to listen. I want to, I want to hear what, and then I tune into the radio, right? So we make every effort and we take every step to listen and to truly listen. If you want to listen, you buy stuff, you move, you get, you position yourself, you take steps, you make provision so that you can listen. If you want to listen. If you truly want to listen, you position yourself to listen. And therefore this morning, it is so crucial that we know that God had something to say to us. And he spoke through his son, Jesus Christ. I'm going to read you a few verses out of the book of Hebrews in a few moments. And I'm so excited that Peter this morning started with what he started out with, the, the, the request to pray for people in India that's going through persecution. 
How many of you know you don't just start writing a letter? Who are you writing a letter to? Well, I don't know. I hope somebody that reads this will find it interesting. No, we don't do that. You've got somebody that you specifically write a letter to. Am I right? When I still dated my wife and I wanted to write her a letter, it was specifically to her. You've got such beautiful eyes. You're amazing. You're awesome. I love it. I knew whom I was writing to. Now, the writer of Hebrews, we do not know who he or she was, right? But the writer of Hebrews wrote to Christians, fellow believers, that went through very difficult times. These Christians were persecuted. Right through history, we read how people were persecuted. Stolen property, beatings, imprisonment, martyrdom have been fate of countries and Christians in history. And by some reports, and again this morning we've heard that, that Christ's followers are being being persecuted more than ever in our own day. Now for those of us who aren't really suffering in these ways, it's hard to imagine the temptations that persecution brings. Christians who live in peace and safety often compromise their faith without threats. Have you experienced that? Without any threat, people compromise their their beliefs. But how much more do you think that people would want to compromise their faith if if they're under this persecution, how much more would you think of maybe compromising your faith when it's not you who's being persecuted, but you standing in faith, but your spouse being persecuted because of your faith? Your children being persecuted because of your faith and being promised some hard times and difficult things. Your family, your closest family. How much more do you think it will be tempting to say, I can compromise my faith to to protect my family? Now, this was the challenge that the writer of Hebrews and the author of Hebrews wrote the book of Hebrews to these Christians were being persecuted. They were, they were going through very difficult things. And he writes to them and he commends them on their faith. He writes them and commends them on their strength, but he also warns them not to lose their boldness. In Hebrews 10 verse 32 and 35, it's not on the board there. I just want to read it to you. He says this, remember those early days after you had received the light when you stood your ground in great contest in the face of suffering. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. The the, the word used here is he's writing to them and saying to them, he says, you've been standing strong. You've been standing in faith. Well done. I'm so excited that, 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 that you do it. Do not throw away your confidence. What he's actually saying, do not throw away your boldness. Do not stop being bold. Do not stop being bold in the face of persecution that comes your way so that you can stand your ground and speak the word of God in this difficult situations. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse three and four, he writes, he says, consider Christ who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. He says the persecution that you are experiencing, the suffering that you are experiencing, the difficult situations that you are experiencing, he says, consider Christ who endured such opposition from sinful men. Why? So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Look at the person next to you and say, don't grow weary and don't lose heart. Don't grow weary and don't lose heart. Some of you need to hear that this morning. Some of you are going through very difficult circumstances and you feel like quitting. You feel like I've had enough. I want to get out of here. Maybe not the persecution that these guys are experiencing, but in your own life, in your own circumstances, it may feel like I'm not getting a breakthrough. Things are not happening as I'm, as I'm trusting God for. I want to say to you, don't lose heart. Don't grow weary. He says, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Uh, The Hebrew writer writes to them and he says, he says, you know what? Don't lose heart. There might be some other stuff still coming where you're going to shed blood. And you'll fight. 
as in the struggle might become even more real. But don't lose heart. Now it's important with all of this background, with, with all of this knowledge that we now know what, what, what the Hebrew writer wrote to his audience, his audience of Christians who, who, are, who are struggling and, and suffering, with, with all of this background, listen to how the Hebrew uh, author starts his letter. And we're going to read 14 verses, so I need you to, to stay with me, right? But listen how he starts. He does not start with, oh guys, my heart goes out to you. My God goes so out to you struggling and, and suffering. If, 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 I, if, if I knew that, 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 that my family was struggling, I would start with that. I would start with, guys, come on, man. Hang in there. Come on. But listen to how the, the, the Hebrew writer and author starts his message. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 14, you can read it behind me. He says this. In the past, listen to how he starts. He says, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets and many times and in various ways. But in these last days, the Hebrew writer writes to his audience and say, in these last days. Can you imagine in which last days we are? <laughs> he says, in, in these last days, he has spoken to us, how? By his son. God's final word, by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he had made the universe. He starts out to these struggling, suffering Christians and saying, God has spoken to us through his son. Immediately, he focuses their attention on who is important and what is important. Does that make sense to you? I want to say just this very quickly before we read on. It doesn't mean that God, that, that, that subsequent to Jesus, God can't communicate with us. Listen to what I'm saying. We still hear His, His Holy Spirit speaking in our lives today, Right? But I want to say this, it means that all of his communication flows from Jesus, points to Jesus, is measured and proved by Jesus, orients around Jesus. Jesus is God's decisive word in this world today. If we start communicating and start quarreling about anything else, we will find ourselves in difficult situations. Now listen to this, verse 3. The son, listen to how, how he writes to these persecuted uh, Christians. He says, the son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. I've said it so many times. If you want to know what, G, well, what God looks like, look at Jesus. Colossians 1.15 says he is the exact image. Jesus is the exact image of the Father. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. You are being sustained by his powerful word. He says that. He sustains all things through his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. How many of you watched the coronation yesterday? Or maybe just a bit of it. Yeah, yeah, so some of you. Listen to what I'm saying. That is nothing in comparison to how the Hebrew writer writes about the king of kings, and the Lord of Lords, how he is much higher, superior. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Listen to how he goes on in verse 5. He says, For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. You may be a bit confused and thinking, where is John going with this? Stick with me. Is that okay? 
I'm just bringing him, the King of Kings, all the praise as the Hebrew writer did. He says, in speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. <laughs> Man, I love it. I love it how he describes him. He says, you, you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says, in the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing that, 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 that how the Hebrew writer describes him? He says, it's everything. You've, you've created everything. Do not forget it, church. You're not living in a world that's not being created and has been created by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I can still see some of you thinking, man, where are you going with this? Hang in there. We're going to get there, okay? Hang in there. Verse 11. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment they will be changed, but you remain the same, and your years will never end. <laughs> To which of the angels did God ever say, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Now listen to this. How many of you know letters don't have chapters? and don't have verses. Now listen to this. The writer described Jesus and he described how, 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 how majestic he is and he described to these persecuted Christians and what they are feeling and what they are experiencing and the difficulties that they are experiencing and the hardships that they are experiencing. He describes this majesty of Jesus, describes him who he is and the glory of who he is. And then he comes in, verse, in chapter 2, verse 1, and listen to this. And just he says this, he says, we must pay the most Careful attention. Therefore, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. He says, I'm, I've described everything to you about who this king is, who this Jesus is, this, this majestic Jesus. He says, we must pay most careful attention. Therefore, therefore, the therefore shows to what I've just said. The therefore shows to what I've just described to you. The therefore shows exactly to what I've just described of who he is. Therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not what? Drift away. Church, if we do not give heed to what Jesus said, we will drift away. If we don't give heed to God's final word to me and you, through his Holy Spirit speaking to me and you, John 14, 26 says this, Jesus says, he says that I will, and my Father will send you the Holy Spirit and he will remind you of what? Everything that I said. And he will remind you and tell you of everything that I said. And everything he said will point to me. Jesus makes it very clear. He says in our walk today, in our, in our, in our, in our, in our, in our walk with, with, with him, he says, God's words stand forever who he is, Jesus Christ. Everything that the author of Hebrews said about Jesus in chapter one was meant to say, wake up. It was meant to say, listen. It was meant to say, do not drift. It was meant to say, take heed, look, zero in on who he is. 
This is who he is. Therefore, you can listen to him. That's why that little connecting phrase is in there, therefore. That is because of all that you've seen in chapter 1, we must pay closer attention to what we have heard. So, almost in closing, if I can bring all of this together, if boiled down and you take all of chapter 1 and the first verse of chapter 2 into one simple sentence, it, should, it, it, it would look like this. Since God has spoken in these last days by His Son, therefore we must give close heed to what we have heard. The dignity, the majesty, the glory of the word spoken, namely Jesus, increases the sense of seriousness of the command, listen to Him. Listen to Him to what he has said. I wanna say this this morning, in all of your suffering, stay focused on him. Here's my question. Do you think that that is a message for today? Jesus modeled with his lifestyle and we should follow his example, but it's also very important to listen what he said and, and, and obey what he said, amen? For the next two minutes, I want to take you on a journey and then I'm done. Two minutes. When you read the Word of God, there are over 300 straight commands that Jesus gave us, that Jesus said. Not an author, not a, that Jesus, that, that, is, that is recorded what Jesus said. We're going to look at 40 very quickly. Listen to this. Jesus said, repent. Repent. What does that mean? It means change your life. Do you think we need to obey that? Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you. How many of you want to be made? <laughs> yes. oh, make me, Jesus. He says, follow me. Jesus said, rejoice. Jesus said, let your light shine so much before all men that they will glorify your Father in heaven. Jesus said, be reconciled. I want to say this to you. Any message from any person that tells you, you do not have to be reconciled, you do not have to forgive, it's not from him. You get it? Be reconciled. Jesus said, do not commit adultery. Amen. Jesus said, keep your word, Matthew 5, 33 to 37. Jesus said, love your enemies. He said, lay up treasures in heaven. He said, seek first the kingdom of God. Not your own will, seek first the kingdom of God. He said, judge not. He said, beware of false prophets. Jesus said, pray for those who spread the word. Jesus said, fear God, do not fear man. He said, listen to God's voice. He says, take my yoke upon you, honor your parents. Jesus said, honor your parents. Kids, put up your hand, quickly, all the kids. All the kids, quickly, yeah, I can't see all the kids. Come on, come on, come on, all the kids, yeah, yeah, come on, come on. Come on, all the kids, yeah, there we go, there we go. Oh, yes, you got it, you got it, you got it. Read this with me. Honor, say honor. honor. Your parents. Oh, man, do I have to? Yes, you have to. Because that is God's word. That is God's final word. That will bring life. Yeah, like Peter just said, it is the only promise. It's the only command that Jesus gives with a promise. He says, honor your parents so that you may live a long life. <laughs> I want to do that. So honor your parents, right? He says this, deny yourself. Do not despise little ones. They are important. He says, go to Christians who offend you. Forgive offenders. Are you willing to preach with me just one second? Look at the person next to you and say, forgive others. That's something we struggle with. That's, sometimes, that's something we think we've, we've got an option. We don't have an option. Forgive offenders. Beware of covetousness. 
honor marriage between one man and one woman. Lead by being a servant. Jesus said, make the church a house of prayer for all nations. Pray in faith. Bring in the poor. Render unto Caesar. (laughs) Oh, man, did that have to be in there? Do you know how much Caesar I need to give to Caesar? And I render to Caesar. No questions asked. Jesus said it, right? Love your neighbor. Be born again. Oh man, I love this. Jesus said, await my return. (laughs) He's coming back, church. And he's coming back for you and me. How exciting is that? Jesus said, celebrate the Lord's Supper. And that is what we're going to do here this morning. We're just obeying what he said. uh, Celebrate the Lord's Supper. Watch and pray. Jesus said, watch and pray. Pray with open eyes. Watch and pray. (laughs) I have to stay focused, otherwise my head will go all the place. Keep my commandments. Feed my sheep. This is his word. And something that I'm very excited about. Jesus said, go and make disciples and baptize them. It's his word. He said, teach disciples to obey. Teach my disciples to obey. And one last thing. Like I said, there's over 300. I'm just giving you 40 this morning. Jesus said, be one. Jesus said, I don't care about the denomination. And I don't care about your theology. And I don't care about this. If you make me the center of it all, be one. If you sing like this, if you sing like this, if you sit like this, it doesn't matter. Be one. One. Will you want to preach with me just one last time? Look at the person next to you and say, we are called to be one. I want to pray for you this morning. And can I ask the musicians to come up if that's okay? My heart, as I prepared this message, um, my heart just went to a place of, it's so amazing that the author of Hebrews does not start with their suffering. He doesn't start with where they are in the world and what they are experiencing. But he starts with Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know and I know that if we stop listening to him and if we take our eyes off who he is and we start focusing on what's happening around us, we lose hope. Is, is that true for you as well? That, that when you lose, when you take your eyes off Jesus and what He said, we lose hope. And some of you this morning here have lost hope. I want to say this to you. This table, this communion table speaks of hope. Speaks of life of a resurrected Jesus that is able to save, to deliver, and to heal every circumstance in your life. So I want you to close your eyes, and while we close our eyes, I want to ask our helpers to go to our different tables, if that's okay, and help us with distributing some of the elements Thank you to all our helpers. Appreciate it. While they're going out, can I ask you to close your eyes for a moment, if that's okay? If you are in this place this morning and and you feel like John... 
I've lost hope. But I want to focus again this morning. Just raise your hand. I would like to pray for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your final word about our lives. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that reminds us continually of what Jesus said. That direct our lives and direct our, our thoughts. That direct our lives. It doesn't matter what we are going through. Thank you this morning for this table. Thank you for the table where we can celebrate your life and your resurrection. Be glorified, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray everyone who sits this morning in this building will again focus their eyes on who you are, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.